All right, so in this tutorial, what we're going to do is answer one of the most common questions that we receive in the community, and that's how do I lock the navigation and then unlock it after the user's done something? Now, in this case, we're going to have a main menu, and we're going to click and go through these different modules, and then when you're done, you're going to be able to go uh, to this new section. So we're going to lock the navigation. So you can't go from here to here until all these are done. Now, the technique we're going to use is pretty straightforward. It's going to be simple once you see how it's set up. While we're doing something simple uh, in terms of locking navigation and then unlocking it, the reality is once you learn this technique, uh, you can build more complex e-learning. So you can use this uh, for adaptive learning. Uh, you can use it for branch scenarios, uh, all sorts of interactions. Essentially, we're going to track what the user is doing. And we're going to use variables to do that. And then because we have these variables, we can use the information in the variables to do other things. So in this case, we're going to track that you're completing a module. And then we can use that information to let you go uh, to a new area. But if you want to build something more complex, you can do that and just using the same types of steps. So let's go ahead and get started. Just a quick overview. So we've got three buttons. Each button goes to its own module. So we're going to go one's going to come here. And then you're going to click here. And then the main, the next button on these modules is going to jump back to the main menu. And then you can go through all of those. So you can't really ever leave this scene until these are going to be all complete. So let's go ahead and first thing we want to do is we want to lock the navigation. So if I'm on the main slide, and you'll notice I'm in story view and storyline. So I can do some triggers here. And that lets me look at everything from a big picture. So I'm on this slide here, and I want to set a trigger. I'm going to hide or disable the next button um, when the slide starts. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to change the state of the next button to, we'll say disabled, uh, when the timeline of the slide starts. So what's going to happen is when this slide launches, the next button is going to be disabled. And so I won't be able to navigate outside of that. Now I'll be able to click on the button so I can stay within here, but I'm not going to be able to navigate away. And what we want you to do is all the interactions in here. Once you're done with that, then we're going to let you move to the new scene. And again, this is simple, but this could be a more complex branching type interaction if we wanted to. Uh, while we're doing that, let's look at the player. We're going to use the modern player. So the modern player looks a little bit different. So the next button's a little bit more subtle. Um, and when it's disabled, it's going to be grayed out, but you may not notice it as much. So what you can do is come into colors and effects for the modern player. And I'm going to change this to text and icon. And you can see it's going to be a little bit more visible for us. Now I turned the previous button off on this slide because there's no previous to go to. So if we I'll preview this slide, we'll see that that trigger is going to disable the next button. So you can see it's disabled and we can't do anything until um, these things are going to be complete. So let's go ahead and close this down. And let's uh, add a trigger. So make sure these are going to those modules. So that's really good. Now what we want to do is uh, we want to track that you're actually doing something on these modules. So this is where creating variables really comes in handy. And we'll talk a little about the difference between evaluating the state of objects and using variables. But let's create the variables first. In Storyline, working with variables, it's a three-step process. So first step is create a variable. So we're going to uh, create a variable to track if this module is complete. So let's go ahead and add a variable. We just give it a name, module. We'll say module one complete. And I like to name the variable so that they kind of read like module one complete is false so that I know it's not complete. Or you, if you want to be very specific, you can say module one is complete equals false. Module one is complete equals true. So we're going to choose a true false variable and we're going to say the default value is false. So module one complete is false. And let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste this twice. So we know here. We're going to go mod 2, and then here we're going to go mod 3. And so now we have variables. So we created variables. There's true, false. The starting value is false. Whenever you work with variables, it is always a good idea to use uh, references. 
So just insert a text box uh, and you can get rid of these later. But the, the what the references do, they let you know if the values are actually changing. So this way, if you go to troubleshoot, you know the variables have changed. So then you can see why why are the triggers not working the way I want them. But if you can't see if the variables are changing, then you know you don't know if they're actually working the way it should. So that's just going to insert a text box. I'm going to say one equals and then I'm going to insert a reference and we'll do mod one. So this is basically we'll stretch it out so we can see it. Uh, so the reference is one equals whatever the value of that variable is. Since they're basically the same, I'm going to copy this and let's just go ahead and paste and paste. We're going to change this uh, two equals three equals. And since the titles were almost the same, we just need to change the numbers in here. So we know the values are currently false. So let's go ahead and preview this and we should see that on the screen. So we know that the values here are false. So this way when we go to troubleshoot, we can say, OK, the variables aren't changing. That's why uh, it's not working right. Oh, the variables are changing. So let's figure out why it's not working. So it's always good to have these references. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll just we'll just keep these here. Now what we want to do is change these values. Currently they're false, right? So first step is create your variable. Second step is uh, create a trigger that's going to change the value of the variable when the user does something or something happens in the course. So we're going to go to the first module and let's just add a trigger in here. And the, on the last slide of the first module, we will change that variable to true. So when you get to the last slide, that means you've completed the module. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to adjust variable. Choose my variable module one complete and we're going to say equal to the value of true and we'll say when the timeline of the slide starts. But you can use any any trigger here uh, to change it. And so what should happen is when they get to the slide, it should change the value to true. Now I can add a reference here if I want to, but since we're going to come back here, we can we can see if it's being changed anyway. So let's go ahead and we can copy this trigger and let's go to these other ones here and let's paste the trigger here and we're going to double click. We want to change mod two equal to the value of true when the timeline starts for this slide and we'll come to this last one. Let's paste it again and we're going to double click in here. We're going to adjust variable module three complete value true when the timeline starts. All right. So what should happen is we preview this scene because we have to go through all three of the slides. So right now they're all false. I'm going to click on module one, go through the module. Boom. I get here. There's a trigger here that's changing that value from false to true. Click next. It takes me back and you can see it changed. So when we know that's working and we'll do the same thing here, we can see that one's working and we're going to come in here. And we can see that's working. So everything's working. So the variables are working the way we want them to. So now what we need to do is a um, couple things. So we may want to change the state of these to visually indicate that they're being changed. So we can use visited states if we want to. So that's one option. Or we can use custom states. Um, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to use uh, visited states and show you how that works. I'm going to click on a button here. I'm going to go to states and I'm going to edit states and I'm going to create a visited state. So a new state we will go visited. And let's just make it a different color. Let's go to format and let's just change the color. Let's make it this light blue. All right. So the way a visited state works, if I click on this, if there's a visited state, I don't have to have a trigger. The visited state knows when I click on it, it's visited, right? Because it's expecting, I mean, it's it's registering the click. So I don't need to have a trigger that says change the state of this. It's just going to change because it's a pre-built uh, state. Now, some people don't like using visited states. They, they may create a custom state. So this way that you have more control. And the reason is, 
Visited states don't use triggers. They already have kind of a pre-built functionality. Uh, sometimes you can use pre-built states and then you're using triggers and the triggers you create may interfere with the uh, the, the way the pre-built states work. Uh, so if you want more control, don't use a visited state and just use a completed state. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and um, change that. So visited state is going to change when I click it. But what if I only want to click it when it's actually complete? Because you can click on the module and go to it, but not actually complete it. So visited state may not actually indicate what you want. So we're going to get rid of this state. So I'm just going to come back in here. We'll select visited. We're going to delete it. Let's go ahead and create our own state. So you can create your own state and just start typing in. We'll just call it complete. So that means it's complete. And let's just go, we'll color it blue as well. So um, I want these to all have a completed state. So I'm going to go ahead oops, and select that, do Format Painter, and apply that to these. So now they all have completed states. So again, the value of my custom state is I can control when that button goes from its normal state to completed. If I use a visited state, it's going to change when I click on it. But clicking on it may not indicate that it's actually completed. So it depends on what you want to do. By having a completed state or a custom state, I can choose when I want it to change. I can make it change when I click on it, or I can make it change when these uh, variables here are equal to true. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to change the, this button here, right? So what I want to do is I want to say, uh, change the state of that module one button to complete when the timeline starts of module one on the condition that, or not actually, when the timeline of the slide starts, on the condition that variable module one is equal to the value of true. So here's a common mistake people make is they'll say, change the state of this when the variable is equal or change the, well, let's look at the way it reads. So change the state of this when variable changes. The problem though is the variable's not changing. The variable's already changed. If you're on the slide and you do something and the variable changes, you can use that trigger. But because the variable's already changed, when you get to the slide, it's not changing, so it's not going to trigger. So what you need to do is when that slide launches, you want to evaluate the variables and then you want to set that trigger. So we're going to go ahead and do that, which if we read it, change the state of module one to complete when the timeline of the slide starts on the condition that module one's variable is equal to true. And we're just going to copy and paste this trigger a couple times. Now you'll notice it pasted here and that's because I had the button selected. So we're going to go ahead and come over here. Let's select the first one, change the state of module two to complete when the timeline starts of the slide based on module two being equal to the value of true. Hit OK. And now you can see the triggers here. And we're going to click on this third one, change the state of module three to complete when the timeline of the slide starts on the condition that module three is equal to the value of true. Hit OK. And now you can see you've got these triggers. So we're going to change the next button to disabled. So now we can't navigate. Uh, you can only click to these modules. And then when you come back, we're going to evaluate if it's true. We're going to change this to complete. And so we're going to go ahead. Oops. Let me preview the scene. And let's see it work. So we know that the variables changed because we already tested that. So I'm going to click on module one. Go here. Come back and see it reevaluates it. Click here. The variable's been changed. When I launch the next slide, it's going to change the state if that variable is true, which we know it is. And so it's changing it. And so now we have a way to track that you're doing something. So we can uh, use this information or we can use inf this information. So let's go ahead and do this. We got to do one last thing. And what we want to do is we want to open up the navigation now. And why do we want to open up the navigation? Well, we, we know that these have all been completed. How do we know that? Well, we've got two ways. We know the state of the objects have changed. So we could evaluate the state of the objects and say, you know, when the state of all of these are um, complete, then 
you know, unlock the button or change the state of the next button. I like to use uh, variables and the reason is state changes are unique to the slide. Uh, variables are unique to the course or they're available to me anywhere in the course. So it gives me a better control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trigger here. I'm going to say change the state of the next button to normal and we'll say when the slide starts on the condition here with slide of this this slide and we're going to say on the condition that these variables module 1 is equal to the value of true and we'll add another one module 2 is equal to the value of true and we'll add a third one when module 3 is equal to the value of true so when this slide launches, if these are all true, not only are these going to be visually indicating that, but the next button should be enabled. So let's go ahead and preview this scene. And what we're going to do here is click this, go through here. That's done. That's done. And now we can see the next button's enabled and I can move on. Uh, I need to just set the trigger for the next button. So let's go here. Let's set the next button. Um, where is it at here? We're going to say the next button jumps to slide section two. And so now we know we're finished. Everything's working right. So that's using the variables. If you didn't want to use the variables, what's actually easier to set up. But again, I like to use variables because it gives me control. Let's say I get rid of this here. And since these states are all going to be changed to complete, I could say change the state of the next button to normal when the state of all of these. So now I can say module one, module two and module three are complete, which you can't see it's off screen, but when they're complete, hit OK. So it's going to work the same way. So they're only going to become complete if these are true. Um, so if we preview this project, what's going to happen here is um, click, go through here. I can see I'm going to take a shortcut here. I'm just going to click the summary slides and that's going to trigger the variables. Come back here and now you can see uh, it's unlocked as well. So I can click and I can go to the next section. So a couple ways to do it. Personally, I like using variables versus states. And again, the variables just give me more control. Mm -hmm. And if you have a lot of states, sometimes uh, that may not work the way you want it to work. So I just like using variables because I can see the triggers. I know exactly what the triggers are supposed to do. And I'm not confined to that slide. I can use this information anywhere in the course. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, and it's a quick, quick lesson for you, or maybe not that quick. It's 18 minutes. But um, for those just getting started, this is the most common question we get. So it's worth going through here, uh, practice doing this, and I'll give you the source files. And then um, you can see how it's built and then try to build it yourself. Because once you understand how this works, again, this activity is relatively simple. But once you understand how it works, it's really going to free up a lot of things that you can do in your courses and, and, and make more engaging and more complex type interactions.